about 780 miles from Kolkata, 740 miles from Chennai and 120 miles from the Cape Nargis in Burma. On the edge of the Bay of Bengal lies a set of around 572 islands called the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Until late 1938, the British government used these islands as a penal colony for Indian political prisoners, often referred to as Kahalapani. But very few people know that these islands have seen a brief period of Japanese occupation, a period which is considered as a very dark and dreaded times in the history of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. <laughs> During the Second World War, Japanese dominated the Pacific Ocean with the attack on Pearl Harbor and soon in the year 1942 claimed its dominance over the Indian Ocean. The British garrison then was consisting of 300 Sikh militia with 23 British officers who were recently augmented in January 1942 Japan declared war against England by the end of 1941, followed by rapid military success including the fall of Singapore in 1942, then occupation of Philippines, Borneo, Sumatra, Java, Malaya and Burma. The British garrison at Ross Island, officers and members of European families were evacuated to Calcutta on 2nd January 1942 on the vessel SS Maharaja and on 9th January on naval ship Alanga. The last ship SS Norila sailed off fully loaded from Chatham Jetty on 13th March. It was intended for a return trip though. As the ship was preparing to leave Calcutta, the Japanese forces had landed in the Andaman Islands. In the early hours of March 23rd, 1942, Japanese Imperial Navy Cruiser Squadron and the light carrier Rijo seized Andaman Islands. The garrison offered almost no resistance. The British officers were sent to Singapore as prisoners of war, while the then Chief Commissioner Charles Francis Waterfall, Deputy Commissioner Major A.G. Bird, and other British civilians leaders were imprisoned locally. These islands were placed under the command of Indian National Army Colonel Busho, while a number of junior Indian officials in the administration were elevated. Many of the Sikh militia later enlisted in the Indian National Army. Shigeru Ishikawa became the military commander of the islands. The defense of the islands was assigned to the newly formed fighter squadron of the Kanoya based at Tavoy in southern Burma. Six flying boats from Toko Kokutai were dispatched on March 26th while 12 more arrived shortly and by the end of March 1942, these islands were garrisoned by 600 soldiers and unknown number of policemen. Mm -hmm. 
Chinese, Koreans and Malayan girls forcibly taken from Penang by the Japanese to work as comfort girls for the troops. Also, the procurement of local girls as comfort women for their soldiers. Hideo Iwakuro was the Japanese liaison officer to the Indian National Army then. Apparently, Andamans were the only part of the India that came under the control of Indian National Army, the Liberation Force headed by Subhash Chandra Bose. However, its administration over the islands was just nominal, power truly vested with the Japanese forces. Very soon, everything turned so that caused the residents of the islands to develop a deep hatred for the Japanese. Events following the next three years from 1942 to 1945 are not easy to establish as the Japanese destroyed all records when they left. As reported by a local resident then, Ramakrishna, and few unpublished accounts by a British officer, D. McCarthy, in his book, The Andaman Interlude, together with the memories of older inhabitants interviewed by historians, all are in agreement that the occupation saw numerous atrocity committed by the Japanese against the local population. The very first incident came on the fourth day itself in the Aberdeen village of South Andaman. Angry by soldiers who had pursued some chickens into a local residence, a young man called Zulfikar Ali fired an air gun at the Japanese. No one was hurt, but he was forced into hiding. Twenty-four hours later, he was captured and marched to the Maidan in front of the Brahmin club. His arms were twisted until they broke and then were shot dead. During the early days of Japanese occupation, local intellectuals were encouraged to join Raj Bihari Bose Indian Independence League. A peace committee was formed from its members, headed by Dr. Devan Singh. Next few months, the Peace Committee did everything to elevate the sufferings of the population at the hands of the Japanese, but to little avail. Later, most of them fall victim themselves at the hands of the Japanese. Then came the assassination of A. G. Borg on the 10th April 1942. Pushkar Bakshi persuaded a fellow convict, Swaroop Ram, to bear witness at Bird's trial that he had been spying. According to an eyewitness, a popular man known as Chiri, Bird in Hindi, had his arms and legs twisted and broken and was then beheaded by Colonel Bosho. Japanese were determined to make an example out of Mr. Bird. Meanwhile, in the Indian Ocean, war progressed and the Allies grew stronger and the Japanese began running short of food supplies. Ships bringing in supplies became the target of British air raids and were being sunk just as they entered the harbor. By 1944, Allied forces had sunk more than 750 merchant vessels. Fearing that the islanders themselves were passing on shipping details to the Allies, the Japanese became suspicious of anyone torturing and murdering suspects. October 1942, mass arrest of spies took place with 300 people confined in the cellular jail. Of these, seven were shot including Narayan Rao, who had been superintendent of police under the Japanese occupation, Itter Singh, the deputy superintendent, Subedar Subhi Singh of the military police and Dr. Surinder Nag. As reported by Jayant Das Gupta in his book, Japanese in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Red Sun over Black Waters, several residents were executed on charges of spying. 
Local women were forced into sexual slavery and hundreds were rounded up to provide forced labor. In 1943, a second reign of terror was unleashed by the new commander of the garrison, Colonel Joshi Rinosakai, and the chief of police, Ms. Tubashi, both of whom had served at Nanking. 600 people were arrested and tortured, including Dr. Diwan Singh, who died as a result of his injuries. Japanese placed these islands under the nominal control of Arzi Hukumute Azad Hind, Provisional Government of Free India, under the leadership of Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. On December 29, 1943, political control of the islands was passed to the Azad Hind Government of Subhash Chandra Bose. With the Japanese cameras rolling, Bose raised the first flag of Indian independence on December 30, 1943. Andaman and Nicobar Islands were renamed Shaheed and Swaraj respectively. During his only visit to the Andamans, Subhash Chandra Bose was kept carefully screened from the local population. Though various attempts were made to inform him sufferings of the people and the fact that many local Indian nationalists were at the time being tortured in the cellular jail, Bose appointed General A.D. Loganathan as the governor of the islands. After Bo's departure, Japanese remained in effective control of the Andamans. During interrogation after the war, Lokanathan admitted that he only had full control over the island's vestigial educational department as the Japanese retained control over the police force. N. Iqbal Singh, in his book, gives an account of life under the Japanese. He writes, The cruelty and torture were unprecedented, besides, as the imports of almost all things became scarce. The prices went skyrocketing. He was rupees 200 per seer and rice was practically unobtainable. On 30th January 1944 occurred the most dreaded act at the hands of Japanese, the Humphreyganj massacre. 44 Indian civilians were shot by the Japanese on suspicion of spying. Many of them were members of Indian Independence League. Royal British Navy units targeted Japanese facilities and intercepted supply ships, which the Japanese were forced to send without escorts during 1944-45. When the food situation further worsened in June 1945, Japanese dealt the crisis with a massacre, rounded up and executed 750 civilians in Port Blair area only. This seems largely designed to eliminate witnesses to their occupation atrocity. According to a survivor released convicts called Saudagar Ali, at least half drowned or were eaten by sharks as they were pushed out of boats in the dark, while the remaining either died of starvation or were killed by Burmese pirates. After the end of the occupation, a rescue mission sent to one of the islands, now called the Havelock Island, found just 12 survivors and over a hundred skeletons on the beach. Approximately 200 people in the Andamans, which is 10% of the Priva population, are thought to have died. 
casualty on the less populated Nicobar Islands were fewer as the Japanese did not have a garrison there. Although in the year 1943 they created a brief reign of terror on the Kar Nicobar as well as they rounded up forced labor among the Nicobaris. The British, after the Japanese surrender in August 1945, had many colonial positions to reoccupy that took higher priorities, including Malay, Singapore and Hong Kong, with prisoners of wars in terrible condition. The primary problem was the shortage of shipping. Thus, the British reoccupation of the islands was delayed to October 7, 1945. On the morning of 7th October 1945, more than a month after the Japanese surrender, a British Mercy ship entered the harbour, thus came to an end of the Japanese occupation. By the time the British came back, the islands were starving. The caption of this wire service photo reads, Another Japanese victim, Sister W. Jonathan of Tatanagar, India, carries a native whose withered body attests to the starvation suffered by the Andaman Islanders at the hands of Japanese. The occupation of the islands by Japanese is indeed a dark period in the history of this region. Bunkers built during the Japanese period are still a common sight along the beaches of Port Blair. The site of murky episode in the history of Andaman and Nicobar Islands.